Microsoft Flight Simulator and its streaming photo imagery have opened up a virtual world to millions of pilots, both new and old. Join me, Lee, for Video 1 in my Circuits of the World series. We begin with Formula 1, Part 1, The Americas. Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real-world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high-quality aviation content and entertainment. This video is not limited to those with Microsoft Flight Simulator, of course. Any sim with ortho or detailed photo imagery will suffice. As mentioned, this is just the beginning of this series where I will explore racing circuits the world over. We begin with Formula One, which is behind only football and global audience. For us in the United States, that would be soccer. I'm an avid motorsports enthusiast, so expect tracks including IndyCar, sports cars, and touring car circuits to follow. Our first circuit we visit is Circuit de Gilles-Villeneuve, located in Montreal, Canada, on the Ile Notre-Dame. The circuit is a short flight from where we would likely arrive in the real world if attending the race. Charlie Yankee Uniform Lima, Montreal Trudeau International Airport. This F1 series will be constructed largely as a combination of the 2019 and 2020 seasons with the Americas, flyaways, and European sections, some of which may be divided into multiple segments. We will depart CYUL to the east-northeast, and we're going to try and track the 120 radial from the Montreal VOR DME, Yankee Uniform Lima on 116.3. We can also cross-check the circuit's location with the 345 radial from the St. John Vortac, YJN 115.8. We should arrive just over the circuit when both of these line up on our NAV1 and NAV2. At this point I have just flown past the 120 radial from YUL on my NAV1. I'm going to make a slight course adjustment to bring that online and NAV1 is our primary source for locating the circuit. And then I'm going to use NAV2 to uh, back up and triangulate it. We'll make the course adjustment and then proceed forward through the video. The skyscrapers of downtown will begin to populate off to our uh, 12 to 1 o'clock. We'll use those as a VFR reference point, and our destination is just beyond that. Hosting its first race in 1978, hometown hero Gilles Villeneuve took the inaugural win for Ferrari. Originally named the Ile Notre Dame circuit, the name was changed in 1982 following the death of six-time race winner Gilles father of Jacques Villeneuve. If this name is also familiar, Jacques would win the 1995 Indy 500 and the CART PPG IndyCar Championship the same year, and later become, in 1997, the Formula One World Champion and win 16 races between IndyCar and Formula One. As we turn to make our approach here, the left island is the one we're most interested in as that contains our circuit. The one on the right is also site to the expo and numerous other areas, so it is a great tourist stop here as we overfly and just take in the scenery. The man-made island in the St. Lawrence River was constructed for the Expo 67 World's Fair with the biodome sitting adjacent the circuit's hairpin corner. This corner was made famous in 2007 by Robert Kubica's accident. The result of this accident allowed Sebastian Vettel to compete in his first Formula One race at Indianapolis the same year. In a sweet bit of irony, Robert Kubica would fully recover from his injuries and win this race in 2008. A large rectangular basin can also be seen. This is the Olympic Basin, created for rowing and canoeing events during the 1976 Summer Olympics. As we fly up this circuit, our left wing is over the pit area now, 
and just passing off our right wing would be uh, turns six and seven. We take a look down now and we have visible turns one and two as the circuit leaps back. The red there would be dividing the main straightaway from pit exit. And of course, just further up would be the champion's wall, the final chicane, leading from the back stretch down to the front straightaway. You can clearly see the Olympic rowing basin right there in front of us, as well as a couple of the spectator stands in the turn two area. After 15 minutes of flight time from Montreal, we have arrived to Circuit de Gévilneuve. And um, upon taking a look at the circuit, we're going to go ahead and head back to the same airport as we departed from. We'll maintain an approximate 275. We can actually see the airport off in the distance. And that concludes our trip here to the Montreal circuit in Canada. The second circuit we'll look at today is in the United States. Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. We're going to depart Kilo Alpha Uniform Sierra, Austin Bergstrom. And on this video, we're going to depart runway 17 right. A 17 left will give you an even shorter flight. We're going to make a slight left course adjustment and maintain this one visual despite the uh, rather low cloud ceilings today. And we're going to be looking for the circuit just on the other side of the 130. Originally opened in 2012, the Herman Tilke and Miro Rivera Architects Design Circuit is a multi-use venue with a capacity of 120,000. Circuit of the Americas has hosted nearly every motorsport series imaginable. A few of its unique features are the 251-foot-tall observation tower, the Germania Insurance Amphitheater, which is able to hold up to 14,000 for concerts, and the soccer stadium for the Austin Bold Football Club. Even as a relative newcomer to the calendar, the 11% gradient up to turn one, which is also the highest point on the track, and the counterclockwise direction make this circuit unique. Whether you've seen an F1, IndyCar, IMSA WeatherTech, FIA World Endurance Championship or Rallycross Race from this circuit, the smell of barbecue has likely tickled your olfactory receptors. Welcome to Austin. We are approaching the circuit from the final corner, straight up the uh, main straightaway here. The amphitheater would be off to the left as well as the uh, tower. You can see the amphitheater coming into view under a wing right there. This would be the main circuit. And then uh, we're going to make a turn and, and head back. Turn one would be just to the right there as we come down through the complex that rather reminds us of Maggots and Beckett's and uh, Chapel from uh, Silverstone. We head out back here to the hairpin and the uh, back straightaway, if you'd want to call it that, is just below us heading the opposite direction as we take a look back there. Even with the poor visibility conditions seen today, uh, the circuit is very easy to find, especially when you're leaving Austin. Um, we are going to actually go and land at a different airport today. Uh, just to explore a couple different things. And where we are heading after this is uh, San Marcos, which if any of you are familiar with uh, Josh Flowers from Aviation 101 on YouTube, I believe this is his home airport. So while I was doing this, I, uh, I saw it actually on the map on either my Navigraph or Sky Vector. And I figured, well, it's close enough. Let's just go ahead and fly down there. So. We will be landing there at uh, San Marcos Regional, which is Kilo Hotel Yankee, India. And we're going to fly basically a south-southwest heading to get there. And uh, if you have your Navigraph charts, you can pull those up and 
get your navigation directions. I forget how I actually uh, dialed it in here. So we make a second pass over the circuit here. We're going to head up towards turn one, which will be slightly off to our left here. And then we'll bank out and head south southwest. And as we are nearing San Marcos Regional, the low uh, weather and, and ceilings today gave me the opportunity to shoot a raw data ILS approach. So that's what I'm doing now. I must admit to being a little out of practice. And this is probably the worst visibility I have experienced so far on one of my flights in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I, uh, I do need to brush up on these. I will say it, it went okay, uh, as you'll see here but I, I would like to get a little extra practice on that. But again, this is one of the nice things about the simulator. Uh, while looking on the chart to find, you know, Coda, I, I recognized another place and, oh, well, let's go fly there. So in, in some of these, as you'll see, we'll take off and land at different airports just to experiment and try landing at different venues. Uh, one of the wonderful things that the, uh, that the photo imagery gives us is a, a real feeling of being somewhere else. So I hope you've enjoyed our visit here in Austin, Texas. Separated by the Federal and Ignacio Zaragoza areas, Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez is a close neighbor to the Mexico City International Airport, which we are at now. Mike, Mike, Mike X-Ray. Offering parallel runways 23 and 05 right and left, we are departing 5 right and will be turning to a heading of approximately 210. The circuit will come into view almost immediately. According to Formula1.com, F1 cars arrived in 1962 for a non-championship race, returning the following year for a proper Grand Prix. That 1963 race was won by Jim Clark. The circuit sits 2,250 meters above sea level. This results in an air density approximately 25% lower than sea level. Exacting observers will note the cars run larger, higher downforce wing elements to compensate for the reduced air density. As sim pilots, we must consider density altitude and so must the teams in Mexico. This reduction also affects engine power and cooling air for the engine, electronic systems and brakes. Larger brake ducts can commonly be seen on close-up images. Be sure to check the links below in the video description for additional information on each of these circuits. At our 12 o'clock, the circuit is coming nicely into view here. You can notice most of the intense green areas over to the right. This would be uh, the Federal area that we are flying over. And our main straightaway or the pit straight would be running from right to left at this point down into the turn one complex, which we are approaching. In the stadium section, a very iconic aspect of this circuit would be down to our far right. Uh, it has some autogen buildings that don't really lend it to its, its true visual um, aspects, but they are there nonetheless. And here we would be flying over the turn one, two, three complex and um, the stadium would be roughly at our uh, one to two o'clock at this point. As you can see, this circuit is very easy to locate from the Mexico City International Airport. If you depart runway 23, it is a slight left course correction and then you would fly um, about over this area here. We have a total flight duration of anywhere from probably one minute to uh, three minutes, depending on how you depart the actual airport. And we hope you've enjoyed this look at the Mexico City Grand Prix circuit.
Welcome to Sao Paulo, Brazil and the GRU Airport, Sierra Bravo Golf Romeo, Guarulhos Montoro. We are taxiing the DA-62 from the south side of the airport today near the base area Sao Paulo and our destination will be in the Interlagos region and the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache. A nine right departure will see us turning southwest to pick up our only navigation aid and we will tune NAV1 to 116.9 for the CGO, Charlie Golf Romeo, Conganjas VOR. I apologize for the mispronunciations ahead of time. My uh, Portuguese is pretty terrible and non-existent. So once we've tuned that radio, we will fly directly to it. After passing this beacon, which is co-located with our destination airport of Conganas, SBSP, Sierra Bravo, Sierra Papa, we will track the 227 radial from Conganhas to the Interlagos area. Brazilian natives Emerson Fittipaldi and Carlos Pache took the first three wins at the circuit, claiming victory from 1973 to 1975. The last Formula One champion from Brazil needs no introduction among fans, the late Ayrton Senna. Brazilians, of course, had strong contenders and race winners after Senna, with the likes of Rubens Barrichello and Felipe Massa in Formula One. And of course, in the IndyCar series, we had Elio Castroneves and Tony Kanaan, among others. In fact, Felipe nearly took the F1 crown in 2008 at his home circuit, this very circuit, by winning the race until a young second-year driver by the name of Lewis Hamilton made a last lap pass on the last corner of the last race of the season, passing Timo Glock, giving him, Lewis, enough points to secure the driver's championship with his own fifth-place finish. This is one of the most heartbreaking replays to watch if you haven't seen it. If you're curious, some of these video descriptions, including this one, are below. This area and circuit is sandwiched between the Repressa Billings and the Repressa de Guaraparinga Lakes. Um, I'm sure I butchered that, so I apologize in advance. With Copacabana on the west side of the lake. Conganhas, again SBSP, is only 1,951 meters or roughly 6,000 feet in length. So keep that in mind depending on the aircraft you're flying here. You can fly back to the International Airport from which we departed by dialing up the BCOVOR, I'm not going to butcher that name, at 116.0 and approximately a uh, east northeast bearing of 060 to get you in that direction. If you'd like to further explore the region, one option may be to fly southeast to Santos Military Air Base, Sierra Bravo Sierra Tango, with its 1400 meter runway. This is a slightly longer leg than if you would return back to our International Airport Departure of GRU. We hope you've enjoyed this look at the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache circuit in Interlagos, Brazil. And a straight course here to go literally between the lakes or Interlagos. We'll cross-check that with our moving map display. You can see we have a good heading. We'll cross the Cinemark and the river, and the circuit lies just at our 12 o'clock on the other side of the river. Coming into view nicely there. And across the lake to our right is Copacabana. You can see there on the peninsula. And we are coming into, I believe this is like the turn five, six area. Uh, turn one leads into the Senna S there and we come down what's uh, kind of the back straight. So we're actually traveling in the reverse direction of the circuit. You can see the carding circuit there to the left. We'll grab this screenshot for you to enjoy later. 
This would be Lake Billings to the south if we made a turn to head back to the International Airport. And this trip should take around 20 to 25 minutes if you go to and from the International Airport and about 12 to 14 if you go to our scheduled arrival airport. I hope you've enjoyed my Circuits of the World video featuring the Formula One Americas region and that you'll be sure to follow Tim and I on Instagram and Twitter at FlightFT2019 and Flight Brothers FT on Facebook. Until next time, plan the flight and fly the plan. If you enjoy this content, consider buying us a coffee to show your support. Visit us at buymeacoffee.com slash flightbrosft or search for us from the menu if you'd like to contribute. A link will be provided in the video description below.